Good old Anywho. band yeah. names after streets. Parkway Drive. We had one of those. So, right better. Summer <laughs> Grove. Remember? Summer Grove? No. Thorn Drive. Summer Thorn. Girls. Yeah. <laughs> Thorn Drive. Thorn Drive. Awesome. Sorry, what? So many street names. Cliff and I had a band in high school called mm-hmm. Thorn Drive. Oh, that's not what I heard at all. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh. Moving on! <laughs> I was just like, where is this? <laughs> This video is brought to you by Backblaze. We'll hear more about them later. But for now, let's get on to today's video. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to local music and the people that make it, including me and my guests. And my guests today are a four-piece Vegas band making Midwest emo. Uh, recently, I reviewed their EP, Eclecticism, which you can find on the channel. Their first official show is Saturday, October 21st, which at time of recording, if you're watching this right when this video comes out, is tonight. Go to Eagle Airy Hall, Old Town Henderson, and uh, yeah, you're going to have a good time. There's another room, uh, former Room 6 guest there, Dantes, I believe, is your co-headliner. There is. Yep. Please welcome to the channel, Paper Dad. Say hi, guys. Hey, hi, guys. audience. Hi. All right, cool. Great interview. I'm just kidding. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Yes. Thanks for having us, dude. Chink, chink, slancha. Chink, chink. Yeah, the audio guy loves that. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So, <clears throat> number one, thank you for coming on the channel. I really appreciate it. <laughs> number two, um, I'm gonna get in, b- before I get into some of my more usual inter- interview questions, I want to say, I know this is your first official show, but what does that mean? You, you've played out before, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. Were you a different name or what? So we actually, we played as a, a backing band for a hip hop group uh, named Wasteland. It's actually a collective of rappers. Squad? Squad. Squad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we, we have friends that are part okay. of that uh, that group, and they needed a live uh, band to back them, so we did that. Yeah. Are they part of a collective? or Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Part of Pigeon Hat Collective? No. 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 no they're they're their own Wasteland thing. is their own thing. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wasteland Records. Yeah. yeah, it's, what is it, Wasteland without the vowels? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. But, but they're, they're local, right? Yes, yes. They are. Yeah. 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 Come on the channel, Wasteland. Let's go. Yeah, Wasteland. Oh, yeah. yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Get you on. You're, we're going to need a little bit of a bigger set. I think there's like eight of them. So. <laughs> the, the camera moves back. Nice. Okay. Right on. And then, and then what? We did the. There were children's recitals. Yeah, we, recital. we, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, at family music. Yeah. Uh, Ms. Shout Ms. out family and, music. And, and shout out Miss Lindsay Ms. for Lindsay. inviting us to do that. <laughs> nice. show, show kids what it's like to be a band in your 30s and never make it. Yep. <laughs> now, yeah. uh, one of you has, no, none of you are dads. No. 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 Which is no. hilarious. I'm the only yeah. dad here. <laughs> One of my favorite questions to ask when there's a dad is like, so what do your kids feel about dad trying to hold on to his youth? <laughs> I can tell you what my wife feels. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I used to do music and then I became a YouTuber and my wife and child are like, we barely see you as it is. You don't get to be in a band anymore. Because <laughs> to be honest, I'd rather load gear at midnight than two in the morning. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, 100%. Uh, first of all, why Paper Dad? Where did that, that name come from? Do you want to tell it, or do you sure. want me to? Uh, Teach the children. <laughs> so, uh, we, Guy and I were actually in a band, I think, like, what, five years ago now? Something like that, um, yeah. And, uh, was we, that Huge in Paris? Or huge in Japan. Huge well, in Japan. Huge in Japan. Paris. Oh, yeah. So there was a few yeah, of them. I met huge, yeah, I met Huge in Japan. Japan. So, um, and we were, we were trying to find a name, mm-hmm. and uh, it was just one of those sessions where we were out in the backyard, we were drinking, smoking a little bit, and uh, and we were, we were just riffing band names. And there was a Kingsford charcoal bag of charcoal, and it had the dude with the spatula and the and I and I just pointed at him. And I was like, "Paper, paper dad,", dad. <laughs> and uh, it was a big hit. I mean, like you, you might have had to be there, but uh, it was a lo- location joke. You had yeah, to be there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, joke. no, that's that's a really cool story. Actually, yeah, yeah. So, I could totally see it happening. Yeah. yeah. So whenever we were thinking of bands or uh, band names, that was like the first thing that I uh, that I. Suggested, and I think we just kind of landed on it. So. Right on. Yeah. Uh, now, you guys, you have a website, officially website, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. paperdad.com, I believe. Uh, yeah. Paperdadmusic. Paperdadmusic.com. Bink. And so, go there, you'll see, you know, there's merch, and there's um, music, and show now, all the things that are on a band website. But um, nice if, you, if you want to be on this channel, with a reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using my email address down in the description, or click the Room 6 social media link, 
That's also where you'll find ways to support the channel and uh, what else I'm doing, like podcasts and live streams. And what the heck, while you're down there, go ahead and like, share, and subscribe. Thanks. Um, so let's talk earliest musical influence. And by that, I mean, what was that moment you remember saying, I want to do that? Well, I think for me it was, uh, you know, performing at a young age. So <clears throat> very fortunately, I got a keyboard when I was like five years old. Actually, it was my brother's and I started playing it and uh, actually just had kind of a natural gift. My parents recognized it and put me in lessons. And because I uh, grew up in a small town, I got to be on uh, the local news station playing Ooh. piano. And as soon as those lights turned on on the station TV, it was just like, this is it. This is what I yeah. want to do. <laughs> Stage horror, yes. yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, no, I'm with you. Been, yeah. been chasing that feeling ever since. That high. Yeah. Heck yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, for me, it was a girl that got me started, dude. It was my first girlfriend. Yep. Yeah. Cheers to that. Uh, she, she said one time, uh, oh yeah, my previous boyfriend like played guitar was so hot. And I was like, I have a guitar. I, I, I can do that. I so, can be hot. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> I, uh, you know, I, I learned all the standards, you know, like smoke on the water, wonder wall, all the, all the stuff that, you know, makes the, <clears throat> makes the ladies yep. awesome. And, uh, I will say that in 2008, I was in a folk band and we, went to the mix 94 one uh uh battle of bands Ooh. and we won and we got to headline at uh bottom of las vegas what was so, the name of the band christina and tuna band that's me first interview hey yep. hey <laughs> um i was just I had, excuse I had to, me I had to, no um christina and the the christina and tuna band okay no i Sorry, it, it sounded familiar. It, it was a long time ago, but yeah, uh, there was a bunch of people that showed out. I saw pictures on somewhere, and there was like probably almost three thousand people. And I think very similarly to you, I was just yeah. like, "Yeah, I, I want, I want this forever." You know, <sighs> this is the best. Most I ever had was a thousand, and they were high schoolers, so <laughs> it wasn't the same. Still cool, <laughs> still cool, gentlemen. Yeah, I'd say mine was uh, my dad got my brother and I and a couple of my cousins that were staying with us at the time some tickets to see Blink One Eighty Two. Uh, when they played MGM Grand, and it was Blink-182, Bad Religion, and Phoenix TX. Nice bill. Yeah, and it was just, it was packed. It was their end of the state tour, so they just kind of broke loose. And I don't know, just hearing everybody scream, and just their stage presence, and just watching them, I was just like, yeah, that looks like fun. I want to hit things, too. Yeah. yeah. He's the drummer, by the yeah. way. Yeah. <laughs> so, that, so that Christmas, it was Dad, can I have a drum set? Oh, and yeah. he got me one. So. Yeah. Yes. Shout out to all parents who buy their kids <laughs> yeah. drum sets yeah. and let their kids' bands rehearse at their house. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And there was no sleep we to be it. had after that. Yeah. My first band, uh, well, I, I don't know why, but the drummer's parents let him just have rehearsals in a room. They had a whole room just for music. That's awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Every corner had an amp. I was singing through a bass amp. Sweet. <laughs> Sweet. The good old days. You learned to listen really, really clear. Yeah. 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 And Crank that treble all the way up. And, yeah. and it was just like, I can't, I can't. Wow. You have the best parents in the world, man. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Shout out. Get on. Uh, Kirk Hammett was Kirk Hammett. the inspiration for me. It was, um, I think the song was called The Cthulhu. I wanted to learn how he did like the palm music. Wow, wow, wow. And it's just the it's just the the one part when it gets all quiet and then James starts singing and it's just that and it was like I need to learn how to do that. Never learned how to do it. But <laughs> when I did get my guitar, the first song that I learned almost all the way through was all the rhythm parts for um Seek and Destroy. So it's nice. still in the vein of Metallica, but um yeah, and then I learned some more rhythm guitar stuff and was like, I really like rhythm guitar a lot. And then my buddy, um, Lance, or Yari, sorry, Yari, um, he's in a local band called Scrutiny um, now. But uh, he was like, hey, I'm starting a band called Luna Floor and I need a bass player. And I'm like, I don't play bass. He's like, you do now. Yes. So, yeah. um, so many basses that have been was, on the show. That was it. Now I have... Um, I think I officially have more bass guitars than I do regular guitars now. I finally, yeah, I'm an official bass player. Nice. So. <laughs> yeah, that was it. Now he's a big boy. Yeah. <laughs> he's a great big boy. Yeah. I'm it's a great big boy. Me. It's me. <laughs> right on. Megadeth is better. <clears throat> now or then? Uh, never. Um, no. 
Funny was Thank them. you. Yeah. He's definitely them. Because after yeah. Gears of War, they just kind of yeah. were like, we're going to make crappy music forever now. <laughs> all right, we're not going down that rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> Send all your angry comments to papertad.com. Or uh, Dave Mustaine. <laughs> no. <laughs> Him. Yeah. Yeah, send him to Dave Mustaine. Yeah, he needs a, he needs a knock him down a thing. All right. Yeah. So, from there. Clifton! Yeah. Who are the Raymond brothers that were on your Christmas outro? Oh. Christmas album Deep outro. Head. Yeah. So, uh, for those that don't know, I uh, did a Christmas album of just piano music and did a whole faux <laughs> Uh, radio show from back in the 30s and 40s and it was well done by the way it's very oh, good you. yeah it's, it's very good. it was very fallout yeah. <laughs> um so my middle name is ray ah so the raymond brothers just kind of fell right into that plus my uh, my grandfather uh his name is raymond too so it was oh, a nice. little homage to him because yeah. i was sitting there like it sounds like a some a band or like raymond brothers sounds like a thing you yeah, know? yeah yeah like a real thing <laughs> all right cool. it, it also i was just like looking through like your your information and your history it was like Raymond Brothers was mentioned nowhere. nowhere. <laughs> so it was very much just like, why? Yeah. But cool. Um, which was worse? Grass, bacon, or pee and j soda? Oh. <laughs> oh. I'm going to go grass? with the grass. Because bacon. Grass, I mean, grass they... was delicious. Whoa. Grass was actually really good. Have you guys ever had the Birdie Bots every flavored beans? Yeah. The grass yeah. was actually pretty good. Earlax. Very, very similar. Uh, bacon. Disgusting. Absolutely. You terrible. would think it would be good if you like bacon, yeah. but bacon flavored things? No. Yeah. Um, I actually see that little white envelope on the table there? No. Yeah. <laughs> Laying right there on the lazy susan? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Inside there is a little Ziploc bag of bacon flavored sea salt that my my family got me because they they go to this local place called Sheffield's, which is like hand make, you know, all spice blends and, and teas and stuff. Cool. You, like the owner rings you up kind of place. Very cool. Really cool. And I always say, like, you know, thanks for dinner, it's really good. Needs more bacon. It could be a salad. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah. It could be soup. I'd be like, needs more bacon. So they got me that. So now you can have bacon whenever you want. Right I'm, on. And, and my my drunk ass immediately said, I'm gonna rim a glass and put whiskey yeah. in it. So now, I'm dude, like, <laughs> yes, I, yes. I haven't done it yet. Haven't Why haven't yet. I done that with this? I haven't Man. done it yet. But you can smell it through the, the Ziploc bag. Yeah. Hell yes. But yeah, um, I, I agree with the bacon soda. Probably is gonna be disgusting. The PPJ yeah. completely Weird. not memorable. Oh, I was going to say, your brain probably uh, like, bummer. what the no, hell is this? No, no just, uh, I, I don't remember drinking it. All right. <laughs> so no grass impact. is the winner? Grass is the winner. Because wow. he, he also enjoyed, what were the other two flavors? Uh, ranch, which was... Ranch dressing oh. soda. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Uh, That's a, not, even, not even my enemies. <laughs> and uh, pickle. Pickle was actually Pickle, good. which, you know, pickleback, basically. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I I'd, could picture, like... I'd be down pickle soda. I wouldn't be mad if I said, yeah, pickleback, and they gave me that instead of pickle juice. Hey, yes. there we go. Just mix them. Right. Society. Yeah. Ranch and pickles. Cool, cool. Tight, tight. Um, wait, wait, wait. Cool, cool, cool. It's cool. <laughs> now then, in the band, he plays keyboard and sings. He plays the... Bo- uh, uh, guitar. Guitar. He plays the boss, the bass, and he plays the drum. Oh, you, do you bang on this all day? <laughs> Not as much as I should. Yeah. <laughs> Trust hey, me. Yo, shout out to same, practice. Same. Make music, not excuses. Yes. Um, I'm good at excuses, though. Yes. I, I made merch that says make music, not excuses. Available at Roosters.shop. Hey. <laughs> um, do you mess around at all with other instruments like for this for this band? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. What, yeah. Like on the, on the recording for Eclecticism. Did you break out of those instrument roles? Was anybody like, oh, I also played... This guy did. I yeah, that. I uh, did the backing guitar for Flowers and Make a Blockbuster Night. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Which, by the way, I love that title. Yeah. <laughs> Nostalgia. Um, Our shoegaze you. expert yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm the only one who knows how to use pedals. Um, it is true. <laughs> so it is very true. I, was messing around with my what is it? Canyon delay Canyon. reverb extraordinaire. Um, my Canyon. Echo. Canyon. Echo. Yes. <laughs> and then my uh, Hall of Fame reverb, which is kind of sort of not mine, but it is because the other guy doesn't want any. Shout out to anyway. the other guy. Um, hey, you know. But, who you are. Uh, and then I have a OCD from was it Full Drive or Fulton? Full mm-hmm. Drive, I think. What? Full Drive. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter. Full Drive. Um, and. Mess around with that and hit some octave chords and everyone was like, what's that? And I'm yes. like, so that's going on the song? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right on. So. Um, speaking of which, stick around. We're going to be seeing a couple songs from them upstairs in room six. That's going to be awesome. So, I hope. <laughs>
Anyway. <laughs> Us too. <laughs> Us too. Yeah, yeah, right. <clears throat> All right, cool. Sean. Yeah. It happened on Fifth Avenue? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Whoa. Talk to me about it happened on Fifth Avenue. Dude, you are unlocking a memory for me, man. Let me get my glass for this one, because, uh, okay. Once more? Yeah. Um, Saki. Yeah. Saki to me. I think that was, <laughs> like, like, one of my first bands. Yep. And, uh, I don't know. I love this moment. Yeah, dude, whoa. <laughs> you want some uh, more, don't you? Yeah, I definitely do. Um, yeah, so it happened on Fifth Avenue. Uh, did not happen on Fifth Avenue. As a matter of fact, I don't even know where that is. That was uh, in Washington, right? I mean, uh, uh, dude, yes, that's what it was. Hold, hold okay, it. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Josh. Uh, yeah, so it, it happened on Fifth Avenue. That I do know Fifth Avenue. Unlock the memories. I, I, I lived on Fifth Avenue. And it was me and Tim, and that's whatever we would do. Uh, uh, just songs in my dorm room, man, and uh, that was like the way to keep fresh with music after I left Vegas. And uh, there's a lot of interesting covers out there under uh it happened on fifth avenue so um yeah whoa dude that's uh that's a great question a word from our sponsors that's my line oh um, all right cool so i just thought it was a cool name no yeah no it that was where we lived so uh so that's why it happened in Fifth Avenue because that's where it happened. And uh, yeah, wow, happened, holy cow. Man. No, no worries. There's a band that's been on the channel and I've reviewed them multiple times. Stanley yeah. Avenue, amazing band. Shout yeah. out. Uh, and, and Stanley Avenue, of course, was a street where uh, I think they rehearsed, if I remember right. Yeah, sure. So it's I, like, uh, there's another uh, local metal band. I don't know if they're still together, but Navarre. Oh, um, that's, of... it's actually a street right over here. Um, I just drove past it the other day and was just like, oh, I wonder if that's where the band Because they named it after the street that they practice on, too, because they have a. Anyway. Good old, anyway. Good old band names yeah. after streets. Parkway Drive. We had one of those. So, right there. Summer <laughs> Grove. Remember? Summer Grove? Thorn Drive. Summer yeah. Girls. Yeah. <laughs> Thorn Drive. Thorn Drive. Awesome. Sorry, what? So many street names. Cliff and I had a band in high school called mm -hmm. Thorn Drive. Oh, that's not what I heard at all. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh! Moving on! <laughs> I was just like, where is this? Yeah. <laughs> is that where they shoot it? Or where they <laughs> I got it. I so, do jokes. I do jokes. All right, one more for you, Sean. All right, all right. Okay. It's Sean. Can you talk to us about the apple juice flood? Apple juice. Apple juice flood. Um, yeah, so that is just a very funny line from the yeah. Fantastic Mr. Fox, which is one of my Thank you, because I had no idea where it was from. There you go. That, uh, <laughs> if that, you know, you know, and I didn't know. Uh, and there is an apple juice flood, and one of the characters looks at the camera and goes, apple juice, apple juice flood. flood. And I thought it was, uh, at that moment, he, I thought it was shareable. And, and he was at the age where you post quotes like that yeah. with no context mm -hmm. uh, on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Yes. So, and I was just like, okay, I'm going to ask. Yeah, yeah, there you go, man. See, that? I don't have to research. I just ask. Yeah, true. Cool. Um, Where are we at here? Cool. We're going to take a quick little break because I'm empty. So, quick little booze break. We're going to get a message from future Josh. Booze break. Booze break. Booze break. This is... <laughs> and now a word from our sponsors thanks josh from the past making youtube videos can be a little resource intensive it seems like hardly a week goes by that i don't have my computer yelling at me about running out of space fortunately i've got backblaze whether you need to free up space on your hard drive or want to be able to retrieve something while on the go backblaze offers peace of mind for just seven dollars a month they offer unlimited computer backups, which you can have access to anywhere with an internet connection. That's safe and encrypted. You can even restore old versions of files from up to 30 days ago. Just for watching this video and for being part of Room 6, and for a limited time, you can use my affiliate link down in the description to get a 15-day free trial. Plus, you'll be helping out the channel. Thanks to Backblaze for being a sponsor, and let's get back to the show. We're back! And if that sponsor spot interested you at all, please help the channel by clicking the link down in the description. If it didn't interest you, that's okay. You can still click that link for the social, Room 6 social media and check out my Patreon page and check out the Room6.shop uh, merch store. Cool? Cool. All right. Cool. Sweet. Cool.
Before I get into uh, more personal questions for the ultra half of the band, I wanted to ask about... See, I have I used to ask about gear, and that went down many, many, many rabbit holes, and, least, uh, especially least. the drummers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Mine's actually pretty easy. I built my own kit. Well, there you go. <laughs> Ayo. But how many do you? How many kits do you have, and which one's in your living room? <laughs> I have three. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, instead, yeah. It, now because you haven't done a lot of shows as Paper Dad, or you know, as a not quite Paper Dad yet, not officially, um, I'm not going to ask the question about your favorite show. Actually, no, you have a favorite show, don't you? The, the library one, right? Or the kids one? Kids recital one, yeah. Kids recital right one. Now, that was, yeah. that was the most fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It can be, it can be really nice to play for people that, like, they're, they're, they love whatever you do and they just dance yeah. and have a good time mm -hmm. and you know nobody's going to get sloppy drunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it was a pajama party too. So yeah, yeah. It, it was awesome. Was yeah. Cool. I was in my jammies. Oh, nice. Um, I want to do, um, like a, a pajama party, costume party kind of thing. There you go. Where it's like, wear your pajamas, but you have to have face paint. Ooh. Hey, I like that. And have a face painter like there. Yeah. Yeah. That would be really, I think that'd be cool because every single person could be different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, tell the face painter like, bring me the sweat proof stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Dips on Batman. Dips on Batman. Okay. On Batman. Just, no man, it's all about Alfred. <laughs> Nobody ever dresses up as Alfred. That's true because he's not Batman, dude. <laughs> now we both know that Alfred Pennyworth, in yeah. his prime, could take Bruce Wayne, could take Batman without the gear, without all the gadgets and the, without the utility belt. No, I, I'm lying. I'm, of course, I'm we'll lying. be right back. Of course, I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> Twelve years of, of mastering every like martial art you can get his hands on. His master was Ray Shaw Ghoul, dude. Like how? Uh, anyway, go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. wasn't his master. I mean, he trained him. Nerd. <laughs> now listen here, you little shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dave. Yeah. You all, you've been on the channel, but I, I forgot to mention he's been on the channel before with Wyatt and the Ashes. I have yeah. with AJ Fuckalo. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Ayo! No, I was on AJ's podcast, and and he he he, he pulled that one out. Yeah. I was like, ah, that's perfect. He's a AJ Fasillo, uh, amazing songwriter. <laughs> but um, did you also play drums for Wyatt and the Ashes? For I Wada, I did. Yeah. Cool. Any plans for a Paper Dad and Wyatt and the Ashes collaboration? Uh, probably not. I mean, Cliff actually did the piano for Cantina. Get the hell out of here! Yeah, yeah dude. Anybody knows that. A yet, lot of so. recycles in here. Because I, I mean, I, like, okay. I've heard both both of you, and I really feel like your sounds could really work well together. Yeah, they probably could. I mean, there's been no talks. No, nothing's off the I'm, table. But... What? AJ? Yeah. Get it happen. I, honestly, I think it would be an amazing, at the very least, do a show together. No, I'm sure that's going to happen. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, 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 and you yeah, could yeah. just stay on that stage. At some point. Yeah. <laughs> you don't play with him anymore, right? No. Okay. No, he's got a new drummer. So They're doing, doing big things. They're doing their thing. So... so which was more work, Spikes or the White Boy Fro? Spikes, hundred percent. Have to be. You have. I'm gonna put a picture on uh, on screen about this White Boy Fro. <laughs> it's just I hilarious. Genuinely, I don't know a White Boy. I was gonna say, dude, I did not so know about. Remember, this. remember my Fro in high school? No. So picture, it, it was kind of like. Well, go ahead. Yeah, it was when I had my my black with my with my my bleach front. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So literally the yeah, white boy yeah, yeah. fro was really easy because I would just literally get out of the shower and just hang upside down with a blow dryer and tell it was dry and then I would pop up and Oh come on, I haven't seen this, dude. <laughs> I want to see this right now, dude. Because you don't love me enough to go down my Instagram. <laughs> you know, like Josh you're, you're welcome. <laughs> yes. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna do that. Actually, I think it was Facebook, but anyway. It might have been. It's probably both. Um so <laughs> before we get to Signore Calione. I, I butchered that. Hey! Terribly. Sorry. You're close. That's fine. Suddenly things are kicking in. I was going to say. <laughs> anyway. That break was the Who are these people? What are you doing in my house? <laughs> right. Where did these pants come from? Anyway. <laughs> so, I wanted to ask, what's next on the horizon for Paper Dad? Like, any, do you have, are you lining up shows or do you have a, a is there a dream, like, festival or what's going on? Oh, festival. Uh, so, so we started doing this for fun. Yeah, we're a band that's terrible idea. For the love, yeah, yeah. 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 For, for, the for, love, for, for the love of the you game. You do it for the yeah. money. Yeah, you know, uh, I think all of us have been in bands numerous times, pursuing the dream, and like that was the goal. It was like make it, and this one we're just like, let's have fun. If we make it, we make it. If not, we're having a great time oh, with yeah. a good group of friends. Yeah, you can always tell when you're watching a band that's like 
they're having a blast on stage. It makes you have a blast. Yeah. Versus a band that you can just tell they're all worried about what they're doing and they're all folk. Yeah, yeah. Dude, thanks for saying that. That's like paramount for me, man. Like I, whenever we were in huge, we had a great time because those were all of our like best friends. And I, and I, such a fun band. It was a fun band. And I, and I, if Tim hadn't moved away, like I, I would have probably stayed. Like no offense to y'all, but like I would, I would have still been yeah. in it. You know what I mean? And. Uh, yep. And I was like apprehensive to do a new project, but these guys like we just we just have fun, man. I, yeah. I just I just had an epiphony. That's an epiphany. Ew. I just had an epiphany. I I, I fronted a cover uh, 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 um indie rock band called The Suspense. Nice what? name. Thank you. It's a, it was about the pregnant pause right before you step on that pedal. Yeah, I love that moment in a song. Mm-hmm. That's an excellent name. Foo Fighter. You know, it was, yeah, like, it was yeah, very yeah. much just. And I wrote songs specifically like. This is gonna have okay. Here's the clean. Here's the yeah. distortion. Here's you know. Right. Um, but but I love that moment. And I uh, came home many sore legs. From, <laughs> <clears throat> but um, I wouldn't know what that's like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, the tagline I came up with was, "We're just here to make good music." And yeah. now that I think about it, that's it's the best. Well, we went through five and a half iterations, and <laughs> and and the, I think it was kind of like. It was all about, you know, no, no, we're you know, let's, you know, let's have, let's, you know, make good music. Let's. Mm-hmm. It wasn't. We're here to have fun. It, you know, and and no matter what I did, no matter how hard I tried, the band kept, you know, people kept leaving. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And it wasn't that I was some sort of like rehearsal dictator or whatever. Yeah. It was just that we weren't hanging out aside from rehearsals. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. and I and and I just kind of realized I was like, you mentioned about have, having fun. I was like, yeah, and I, for some reason, the the tagline popped in my head. I was like, huh, yeah, maybe I'm the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think because we do all these little goofy videos, we we said at one point in time, the only thing we take seriously is the music, right? Yeah, everything else, <laughs> yeah, everything else is just yeah. And we don't yeah. even take that very seriously. So, cool. um, yeah, no. That's like the biggest draw for me for Paper Dad too is just I hang out with basically everybody here outside of Paper Dad. Right. Um, Fridays are dedicated practice days, but if we're if we get to wherever we're practicing and someone's like, you know, I'm kind of going through it, we're all like, all right, cool backyard, let's go have a let's go have a talk have and just kind of you new yeah. musicians. He just said something very very important. Fridays are dedicated practice days. Dude, it's essential. It. And practice, yeah. band practice, does not mean that's when you learn the, your parts. D- that, yes, yes, dude, uh, yes. No. And practice to a click, man. Oh, yes. 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 Mm-hmm. It's the most boring thing ever, but it makes you so tight. It does. And mm-hmm. the tightest bands I've ever had on this channel, when they say, oh, we, re- we, we rehearse and play to a, to a click, I was like, oh. You know, yep. Yep. There yeah, we go. Cheat codes. So, senor... Mm-hmm. Yep. So, are you still defacing shoes with art? Not shoes. Um, He's I, made comic book shoes. <laughs> I, that was a long time ago. Uh-huh. Um, I think those are still in my buddy's bedroom, if not oh my. ready to be passed down to yeah. his kid. Um, I made them for a buddy when I lived in Branson. And uh, yeah, that was like early days of me getting into that kind of stuff. And, why not? I mean, yeah. it's it's cool. It's not it's necessarily cheap, but it's there. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I had the markers for it, and they last a while because they're alcohol based. So you just put a little bit of sealing on it and get some fabric seal, and it'll last. So. Why not? And and you literally can make it one of one. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That's the cool thing about it. And I'll say because yeah. he won't. Guy is a legitimate visual artist. There, yes, uh, I've seen I some mean, of your. Yeah. So yeah. Did you? Come he up, won't. He won't say. Did it. you come up no. with the, the, the paper dad logo with the sticker? On yes, he did. Yes, he did. I. I don't have the stickers. They're upstairs. You gave me some stickers in the past. And, um, up, boom. Yeah. There you go. He made that. Yep. Look at you. This guy's the guy. <laughs> I, the guy. I am proud to say that all the Room 6 uh, graphic design has been me. So that's, that is one thing I'm like, hey, I made a thing. <laughs> but um, I'm not an artist. I'm not an artiste either. <laughs> so do you still agree that music is just wiggly air? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and, what is uh, that from? Everything is four four because you 
are just kind of like a big dumb nerd. So um, stop kind of like big dumb nerds. Everything is four four. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah music everything's is good. Really air. It was, uh, I think it was like a <laughs> meme from. It had like Beethoven's face. Yeah, on yeah, yeah. It. It was Some like it was one of those memes yeah. where like, oh well, Lincoln. You know, Abe Lincoln said uh, something, 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 and mm-hmm. yeah, some, yep. so me, yeah, Beethoven. Just by the way, yeah. I did research that quote. Not true. Never happened. Yeah, yeah. no, of course not. <laughs> Beethoven's, Beethoven's not going to say music is wiggly air. No, because he had to feel it eventually. No, yeah, he, he Beethoven's going to say, what? Huh? <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> that and, I mean, I don't think he's going to say much of anything anymore. Wow. Hey, yeah, oh, shout out to Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> right on. So, um, with that, I have one more question for you. You ready? I'm ready. You made it. Yay. Then we're talking to little you. We're going to circle back to that earliest musical influence. And this is a question I have asked of all my prey. You OG Room Sixers know what's coming. What is one thing that when you said, I want to do that, what is one thing you wish you could go back and tell your little self that you, you should probably know this before you go down this twisted road that is being a musician? And don't say change your strings. You should, though. <laughs> Sometimes. And when's the last time you changed your strings? I don't want to talk about it. Same. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Yeah, I'm a guitarist, and <laughs> I have brand new strings sometimes. You see this? <laughs> no picks. Yeah. <laughs> They're all upstairs. Yes, I'll throw down that one. Um, me, personally, I would say, because I had a few lessons when I was a kid, uh, but then I just stopped going to them for whatever reason. <laughs> Honesty, nice. <laughs> yeah, um, and I wish I would have stuck with it. And you definitely need lessons. You need somebody to teach you what you're doing wrong when you're yes. learning yourself because mm-hmm. you pick up a lot of bad habits and you don't even know yourself. It. Yeah. You don't even realize it until you actually get into somebody that really knows what they're doing and goes, what are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. Cause you're like, you're, you're straining or, you know, you're just, there's just a simpler way of doing things. Yeah. And once you have that muscle memory, it's real hard to get it, get away from it. So yep. lessons, yep. lessons, 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 yeah. lessons, lessons are important. And it's for a lot of people, it's, it's either, you're afraid that, oh, he's going to make me work too hard or, you know, I just want to do it because I enjoy it. Like my kid, I have a 15-year-old, and at it, it, like seven years old, we were like, hey, you know, you like singing, you like dancing, let's do lessons. And unfortunately, we had a few times, a few teachers and stuff where suddenly when the it's like, it's time to go to lesson and they're crying. Oh, so like, okay. Yeah, come on. That's, yeah. You can go back if you want later. Yeah. And now, you know, my kid is 15. They dance and they sing whenever they want to yeah. and do it pretty well, considering, mm-hmm. but they have fun. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're I, not trying to make a career out of it or they're not trying to like, you know, be the best at it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, you were going to say? No, I was just going to piggyback and just say, be ready for lessons, right? Because like, mm-hmm. you know, you can just spend the $60 an hour or whatever, you know, if you have a nicer teacher than that, let's hope. But mm-hmm. uh you know, if you don't practice and you don't love it already, you know, it's it's going to kind of just be money in a hole. You know just like I mean? we said about band practice. That's mm-hmm. not, you know, going to a lesson, that's not the time to figure it out. Right. Yep. To practice. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're going to get the most out of it and you'll get that endorphin rush from your teacher being saying, good. Yeah, from, from getting <laughs> yeah. good, scrub. Yeah. From your teacher being like, you know, wow, you've been practicing. Mm-hmm. It is such, it, it, it's almost as, as much of a high as, as, that first time you hear people applaud for what you do. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'd say for me, uh, being a piano player, I'm, I'm usually always pushing theory, but uh, really the thing I hear most common from people is they're like, hey, I love what you did with piano or whatever the case may be. You know, I used to play. I played for Didn't about everybody. a year. I played, I played for about a year and then I gave up on it. <laughs> and I've heard that countless times. Uh-huh. And I would say with that is that's such a common story because I think you guys have experienced this too. At a certain point, you hit a, a period where it gets difficult, mm. and you're one week, two weeks away from getting over that hump. Mm-hmm. It's an illusion, and they don't get over. Have that you ever hump. seen that that graph? There is it's 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 actually a, a established scientific study where you learn and you start doing like, well, you know, blah mm-hmm. blah blah, and every in every single person goes through that dip mm-hmm. where suddenly things get hard. But if you push through, you come back out. Suddenly realizing, oh, this oh, applies yeah. to that. Yeah, that's why this. Yes. And blah blah blah. Yes. And yeah, that's it when it opens you, up and changes your life. And that's yeah, when yeah. suddenly you're not you're, you're you're just suddenly you're on the road to mastering whatever it is you're doing. Yeah. And that is such I forget the name of it, but yeah, no, it's so, exactly what you're, yeah. you're talking about. Shot. Stick with it. Perfecting Stick shot. with it. Yeah. yeah, the hard is what makes it great. Yeah. Yes. When you yeah. succeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, dude. Yeah. Ah, uh, 
I guess two things. Um, two. Two. Yeah, two oh, things. One, doubling one's down, a, one, man. One's a, one's a quick little. Whose show is this? Little tiny hot take. <laughs> it's my show now. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. Now. Um, he gets his match anyway. <laughs> two things. Uh, your drummer is not your metronome. Ooh. Uh, super hot take. You're welcome. Uh, okay. And second, um, I guess I don't want to really piggyback off of the practice thing, but it's super important. Find a uh, find a mentor or a teacher that is going to not just push you, but encourage you in what you're doing, because yeah. that's like what they've been saying this whole entire time. If you don't have fun with it, you're not going to be able to get over that hump. You're not yeah. going to want to see the end of it. Play the music and you like listening to. Exactly. And, and you will that's have more fun thing. when you get over that plateau. Yep. Like the better you get, the more fun you have. Like that's the weird thing. Like you yep. just have to push through. Yep. And that, that, that ideation that you have where it's like, oh, I don't think I can do this. Well, if you just learn a couple of songs that have that, specific part that you're trying to learn in or maybe talk to somebody who knows a little bit better and yeah like I, i've learned you're never going to be as good as the <sighs> other guy i don't even know yeah. how to play bass but because of these two i do um sean and, and and cliff and um it's it's insane the amount of the small little bit of theory that i've learned from those two gentlemen and a couple other people that i've been in bands with um and I'm leaps and bounds better than I ever thought I could be now, and I still think I suck. So that's the fun part, too, because you're still going to suck if you compare yourself to everybody else, but don't do that either. So I guess three things. But yeah. You were going to say? I was just going to say, mini, mini piggyback. Like, great. If, 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 you, if you learned yourself, that's awesome. That's a great skill to have. You will learn faster if you just talk to someone yep. that knows more. Just like if you're trying to get better at basketball and you play – some shitty person at basketball, you're going to feel like you're great. Mm -hmm. But then you actually play somebody who's great mm -hmm. and you're going to realize, wow, I ain't shit. And then you're going to get better. And one day you beat him and then you find the next dude. And that's yeah. exactly yep. what it is. And man. To, like... to piggyback off of that, <laughs> <laughs> give up music, play basketball. Yes. <laughs> Pays more. I guarantee it. <laughs> Video, guarantee Video game it. theory. If things are getting hard, you're going the right way. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I love that. That's I will good. cheers good. to that, yeah. buddy. Gentlemen. Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching and thank you for being on the channel. Thank, thank you for you. having us. If you're watching this and it is the it is uh what is it, the twenty first, I believe? No, the twentieth. Friday is the twentieth. The show's the twenty first. Twenty first. If you're 21st. watching this and it is October twenty first, go to their show tonight, Eagle Area Hall. You're gonna have a good time. We'll see you there. Also, yeah. I know I know Dante's is there, they're amazing, and there's other bands there. It's gonna be a great show. Yeah. Old Town Great. Henderson. Yeah. Old Town Henderson on it's not on Water Street. No. It's like just off. It's on Van Wagenen. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Van Wagenen. Anyway. Yeah. That being said, make sure you check out their links down in the description for all their social media. Definitely check out their EP Eclecticism, please. But you're gonna hear kind of a stripped down version of that upstairs in room six right after this, and then we'll see you in the outro. In the meantime, temporarily say goodbye, guys. Goodbye, guys. Bye, guys. Temporarily goodbye. Bye. Drowning? Drowning. Chart my maps and calibrate my compass west And when I get to see I'll scream to show that I'm alive I'm alive, I'm so alive, oh, oh, oh. And mark my words, I swear Till I found purpose of my life, no matter how boring or profound. I swear I'll never sleep in a bed that wasn't mine. And think about you all the time. And when I die, my heavy heart will sink to the bottom of the sea. And 
And all the demons that I have will present themselves to me. They'll ask me, why do you choose to torture yourself this way? And I'll say, long has been my love for drowning. They sag and purple from the constant stress My thoughts will float around your face And I digress That when I finally see That glory is your line I know I'm home and I'm alive But when I die my heavy heart will sink to the bottom of the sea And all the demons that I have will present themselves to me They'll ask me, why do you choose to torture yourself this way? And I'll say, long has been my love for drowning. I'll say, long has been my love for drowning. It's only good vibes only. Let's do it. Only. City lights like burning in embers scattered across the ground. Fire. 
We're keeping that one. <laughs> I want to thank Paper Dad for coming on the channel. It was a great show. Whoa. Three, two, one. I want to thank Paper Dad for coming on the channel. It was a great interview and a great performance. If you want to know more about them, hit those links down in the description for their social media. If you want to be on the channel, hit me up using the email address or the Room 6 social media link. And if you want to see more videos like this, click up there. If you want to subscribe, I'd love you. Click over there. It really does make a difference. And don't forget to ring the bell so you get notified. And if you want to hear my own music, click behind Cliff there. Remember to be amazing, and we will see you next time on Room 6. Say goodbye, guys. Goodbye, guys. Bow!